So if you haven't already, go ahead and click Save Views and hit back to 2.0 RenderWorks modes. That'll bring you to this view here. This is again in our exterior view, but this is just wireframe, which we saw before when we first started setting up the cameras. Wireframe is the default view. It's technically what top plan view is as well, but this is 3D wireframe and this is about as fast as it'll get. So if we even go into walkthrough mode, we'll be able to quickly move around. There's no delay. There's, there's very little work your GPU has to do to show you this mode. So it's the quickest and it's generally used for editing and, and doing minor changes, but an easier one for getting an actual view of what's going on texture wise or what's going on lighting wise is if you go to view and rendering and change it to OpenGL. Now, because I've not changed OpenGL in this session yet, it's going to pre-cache OpenGL. You'll see geometry doing it in the bottom right. But as soon as that finishes, it'll pop open OpenGL. And if we go back to wireframe and back to OpenGL again, it'll happen in a snap. And there we go, OpenGL. So now if I go back to view, rendering, and go to wireframe, it'll snap to wireframe pretty quickly. And then view, rendering, and OpenGL again, it'll go right back to going to OpenGL. It won't have to do that whole render again. Uh, you can change rendering modes either by the view and then rendering menu, which is generally where I just do it out of habit. But there's also the view, there's also the rendering menu drop down from the view bar, which is currently set to OpenGL. Now you'll see the preferences isn't under each of these. When you have one of these rendering modes active, the preferences for it will show up down here at the bottom. So if I change this to OpenGL and go back to the menu again, you'll see it's OpenGL option here now instead of wireframe menus. If you want to access the settings of the other rendering modes, you can go to this option and it's just another sub menu, just a different way of getting to it. Now, OpenGL has a number of options that we'll want to take a look at. So we'll go to view and rendering and OpenGL options. Now OpenGL options, you can change live. So for, for a an object like this, for this sort of document where there's a lot of square edges and, and different components to it, there's not really going to be a lot of work to change it from high to low. You're not going to notice it. You'll notice that more if you have curved shapes. You'll start seeing facets along the curves, like a sphere or a, just a, a round cylinder wall. If you have it at low, you'll start to see it looking faceted. And that is the default setting for OpenGL. I recommend turning it to at least medium or high and just leaving it there. Uh, textures, you can disable individually, so it'll just show colors instead of textures. So if we disable textures, give that a moment, it'll re-render with no texture objects. So you won't get any transparency at all. It'll just, it'll take the color away from it. So you'll just get white and black with the edges that we have turned on right now. And I'll show you that again in a moment. There you go. So now we're only seeing color. So these walls had a color of black, the front wall had a color of gray, and everything else, if it's just white or gray, had no color to it. Site model's green, you can see here. Now if we turn off colors as well, we should be a little faster than disabling colors, than disabling textures. We'll get this look, which is sort of interesting. Uh, you can use it, especially if you disable shadows and disable the shading with it. You can get this uh, just to do a quick, very fast view. You can move around in this view very fast with no colors and no textures, but you won't have transparency. See how we can't see through this window, these windows anymore. We can't see through the objects. There's just, this is an open door, so it's not a problem. But we need to uh, turn colors and textures back on in order to do that. Anti-aliasing for OpenGL, you may not notice it'll depend on your screen. So if you're... The problem is it's difficult for me to show you because the screen I'm looking at now, you're not looking directly at. You're looking at a recording of my screen. So if I turn on and turn off anti-aliasing, you might not see it because you're watching a video of this view. So you may not see it. I'll go ahead and change it so you can take a look. But it'll be more obvious on your screen when you turn it on and off that it's actually doing something, especially when you have draw edges turned on. There, now we got our textures back. And if we uncheck draw edges, you can see it looks a little it looks a little more cartoony when the edges are drawn, but generally that gives you a cleaner idea of individual objects. However, you'll get some objects like this. Do you see these are again called coplanar surfaces because there's a slab and a wall interacting here. Without draw edges turned on, it's just smooth. It's able to resolve it. And in the renderworks modes, this is what you'll get. It'll resolve that. But the draw edges are just trying to draw the edges of objects, even if they meet right up against each other. Now shadows in particular are very useful if you need to modify light or if you need to modify where the sun is or where exterior lights are because these shadows, while not great quality, even when you have it turned to high, they're accurate. They're in the right spot. So you can see the different shading that you would get against these windows. You can see where the sun would fall. The sun's up and to the right here. You can see in this example. But shadows is a little harder for a graphics card to handle. So generally I leave that off unless I'm doing specifically looking at the light. If you turn shadows on, you can set it to on ground only. 
But the ground is not a site model that we made. It's only 0, 0 in the document, which is below the site model. So if you have a flat ground plane that's just a 2D object or an extrude, then you'll see it. Otherwise, generally, you want to just leave shadows not doing on ground only. You want them to show everywhere else. Turn that back to the way it was. And in here, you'll also see this. This is the thickness of the pixels. So if you want, you can make these thicker. On my display, one looks fairly good. But if you have a lower res display, you might need to turn this higher. You can turn it extremely high if you like to get a different look. But I generally leave it at one. And the crease angle will determine what level of edges gets an edge. So if I turn this higher, it really is not going to change anything. But if we had a, uh, if I have a crease angle of one, for instance, now, do you see how it's overdrawn the lines on almost everything? I'll turn that to 5. It'll get a little better. See, now it's not trying to redraw shapes. Turning this too low will cause too many lines to be drawn. But generally, 50 or 70 is about what you want for smoothing. There, you can see that. Do you see the pool handle rail here? This is going like a dark grayish because it's drawing a line in each of these facets. If I turn this back up to 50, it won't do that anymore, which is generally what we want. So we'll leave that there. Now, OpenGL has rendering options to it, and so does Custom RenderWorks, which we'll get into in another video. But Fast and Final RenderWorks are the next two that I want to cover here. Fast RenderWorks is a, it's considered a realistic rendering mode that's just going to do, it's going to do shadows, it's going to do textures, transparencies, it's going to show them properly, but it's going to do it as quickly as it possibly can while still using RenderWorks. OpenGL is, of course, faster, but... Uh, the fast render works is designed to give you a render works look at the object. So you won't have these edges. There's no edges option in there. And you'll see the whole screen at once will start to preload and it'll start to resolve very slowly. So you'll get everything and then it'll resolve to what it considers its maximum resolution, which it'll stop in just a moment. There you go, nine seconds. So this render did not too long at all once it got through the geometry phase. But you can see it's inaccurate. And you can see these edges here. That's called aliasing. Do you see these edges along here where it's sort of faceted and you can see pixels sticking out? That's called aliasing. That's turned very low. That's a particular rendering setting, anti-alias. That's set particularly low in Final Qual in uh, Fast Render Works. Now, to compare, we'll turn it to Final Quality. Now, Final Quality Render Works and Fast Render Works are not the only two Render Works modes. And Final Quality Render Works is not the best rendering mode. It's just a relatively decent default that we've set to provide you with a starting point. So if we wait for this to resolve, first it'll look similar to how it did before, but it'll start rendering from the center. It doesn't have full screen preview turned on where you see everything at once. We'll just see the OpenGL view, and you'll start to see the, uh, they're called rendering buckets, those squares. So each of your CPU cores is doing a bucket, and you'll see those squares come from the center. That will start from the middle here. Here we can start to see it now. You see OpenGL was not able to show those transparencies and the water looked completely different. Now you can see it actually in the rendering mode. And look at the edges too. You'll notice you won't see any aliasing in there. You won't see any of that that we were seeing before in the other rendering mode, the fast render works. Now go ahead and I'll wait till this finishes. There we are. And while lovely, that we can do way better than this. This is just giving you an idea of generally when it's done. You can see here the sort of shading. This is called a bump map to give it the sort of a 3D textured look to it in the texture. The water has a displacement map or a bump map on it to make it have that wavy appearance, even though it's just a flat object. The reflectivity is nice and high. The edges are nice and clean. But there's more rendering we can do, more tricks we can do with RenderWorks and custom RenderWorks and RenderWorks styles, and we'll cover that in the next video. The last render mode we're going to cover just very briefly is Hidden Line, which is available even if you don't have RenderWorks. We'll go to View and Rendering, and we'll just choose Hidden Line. We'll wait for that to render up. And there we are. Now, we're not going to mess with this RenderWorks mode too much. Well, well, A, because it's not a RenderWorks mode, and B, we are going to cover the Hidden Line rendering a bit more in the RenderWorks styles, since you can apply lines on top of other renderings. You can combine rendering modes in RenderWorks styles. But we will go basically over their settings. So go to View, Rendering, and Line Render Options is the settings for Hidden Line. It's not Hidden Line Options, just Line Render Options. Now in here, I'll just explain what these various settings are real quick. The smoothing angle is currently set to zero. So in this particular scene, most of these edges are 90 degrees. They're very sharp corners. They're very clean. They're right, they're just straight. See the here where it's a little thicker? 
That's because it's actually rendered a number of lines. If we turn this up to something like 30 or 50 and then render it again, it would smooth that out and just draw the edges. Uh, we have generate intersecting lines turned on. Now, if you can see here, do you see where the water hits the edge of the pool here? And right here where the walls touch the ground? Anywhere where two objects interact that are actually the same object, like this might actually be one wall object going all the way across. But these windows here, where they cover, that's the generated intersecting lines. If we turn this off, these lines where walls meet and these lines where the panels meet together might not be drawn at all. Display surface hatches and display text and markers we will get to in the custom render work settings because that's a little more obvious. We'll show you surface hatching and things like that. Sketch, however, we'll go ahead and turn that on now. That's easy to see. Sketch, and then we'll just do quick, and we'll hit OK and let that render again. Sketch is an effect that's applied over top of a hidden line rendering. So there's already going to be the hidden line rendering element underneath. Sketch is just a modification done to the lines that are already drawn. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment when the rendering finishes. And there we are. And you can see here, it's just sort of designed to make a look as if you had quickly hand sketched it. It, of course, will be fairly obvious to someone that someone did not draw this by hand. It's a little too attention to detail. But you can modify the sketch settings, and we'll get into that specifics in the artistic renderworks video. This is sort of the base ground for the artistic renderworks mode is hidden line with a sketch applied to it. So we'll get to that there. That's your wrap of this video. Uh, the next video, we will cover custom renderworks, which you saw here in the list. And then we'll also explain RenderWorks styles, which we used earlier when we were doing the RenderWorks cameras. Now, I'll see you in the next video.